Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat episode 323, featuring part two of my interview with Stidge, the developer of Underrail. This part of the interview, we talk about Wasteland 2, we talk about combat systems in RPGs, cooldowns, we talk about parties versus single character games, uh, realism, trade-offs, and much, much more. A lot of great stuff here, so without further ado, here is Mr. Stidge. So what are your thoughts on Wasteland 2? I know the, that game came out well after you'd started this uh, project. Also, uh, I read somewhere that Brian Fargo actually gave you uh, Underrail a positive review somewhere or um, not. I think they, they mentioned it uh, on their uh, Facebook page, I think, a couple of times. And um, I haven't really uh, gotten the chance to play uh, Wasteland uh, a lot, uh, partly because I'm... Uh, uh, busy <laughs> in the development. I was very busy with development, and uh, I'm not that into uh, squad-based games. You know, I like when I play RPG. I like to I like to play a single character R RPG. So uh, I have that sort of preference. So so there there's stuff I need to beat before I get to the wasteland. Some something in my backlog. No, but I'll definitely get to the wasteland. And uh, wasteland the two actually. I mean, the timing of wasteland two kind of helped us. Because he, with all the Kickstarter, you know, hype and everything, it uh, it put this sort of the, of games back into focus, you know. And when people started talking about Wasteland 2, they they started looking at other uh, things that are similar and are I don't know available immediately, you know. So you kind of piggybacked on it. Yeah, yeah. So, so some some of them went uh, to us as well. So, and it definitely helped. Yeah, I saw on some of the forums about Underrail, people were saying, oh, I, we want to have companions and henchmen and all this stuff. And they kept, I, I noticed, I, I could almost sense you were kind of getting annoyed by this. And like eventually, I, you know, they were saying, well, will it come at some point? And you finally just said, no, not in this game. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I always said no. I ne never said that there would be any companions. So uh, I don't mind people asking that, but, but, uh, uh, I mean, people who really get the game uh, understand that uh, they, it would be counterintuitive to the game itself, the way the the character uh, character progression and, uh, and the character building is done. It's done specifically for uh, one character to play through the game. So, well, how have the sales been so far? I notice it's getting lots of uh, stellar reviews all over the place. Are you pleased uh, with the way it's turned out so far? Yes, yes. Uh, I think the the event uh, uh, about as good as we could uh, hope for, and not be unrealistic in those hopes. Uh, you know, it, uh, it definitely went well enough uh, to allow us to to remain in business and to do more stuff in the future. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that was my next question. <laughs> uh, I have the questions open in. Oh, the other I suite, see. So <laughs> there might I be some new prepared. ones out there since. Uh... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, did you see the one about the, how the taxes work between yeah, Serbia? Yeah, that's a really specific uh, question. Yeah, I, don't even, I don't know why that <laughs> was even brought up. Maybe. Ta taxes, taxes work. They work well for, for you guys, <laughs> for the U.S. <laughs> no, not so so well for us. Yeah. This is just on a side note. I know it's, uh, it's available now on, on GOG, good old games, and Steam. Yeah. Uh, is, do you have a preference as to which one people use to buy the game? Uh, no, pe people are always uh, like accusing me that that I prefer Steam because like the patches come later on GOG because of you know logistical reasons. You know, but no, I don't have any preference. Uh, I have personally, I have games on uh, both platforms, so I don't mind. I I don't mind buying games anywhere. I'm not one of those so sort of people that want to have like one client for everything. You know? So I don't mind. When I played the game, I assumed that uh, you'd probably use Unity or Unreal or one of those sorts of uh, packages, but uh, then I read that you created the whole thing, you know, the whole engine yourself. And I'm, I'm kind of curious about that, and some other people have asked about that. You know, why did you do that? And I guess uh, <laughs> maybe tell us a little bit about the experience of creating this yeah. engine. Well, uh, the reason is because uh, there are two reasons. First, I like to program, so I, I wanted to write an engine uh, uh, from scratch, and second, I, I always prefer using uh, my own code whenever I can. 
you know so and now that i've written this uh, this engine I, ha I have complete control over the engine and everything that doesn't work as i would like it i can change you know and i can debug it and everything and and that, that just uh, uh, like the years in uh, banking industry taught me that it's it's very important that you have control over <laughs> over your your code and not to rely on uh, other people's stuff especially when uh, when it's uh, of questionable, uh, well, not, not quality, but uh, maybe not uh, that well suited for that type of the game. You know, like you have, you have uh, like uh, engines that are very specific for the kind of uh, 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 game that is made for them, like Unreal Engine, like Source Engine, that sort of, and then you have like Unity, which is like for everything engine. You know, and that, that's. That's that's kind of suspicious to me. <laughs> it probably does everything, but not so well. Mm. You know? Yeah, I'm always a little skeptical of games that are made by something like RPG Maker. Yeah, that uh, that uh, oh, you, whenever you see that kind of game, you you, you can just just on, on first screenshot you can see the limitations. I don't know if they're real limitations or just people uh, just stick to them. But uh, you can you can usually tell like an RPG maker game uh, straight away. Yeah. What was the hardest part of making this engine? The hardest part would be uh, definitely the rendering code, the code that orders everything in the isometric because uh, isometric is uh, it's not uh, the concept is not uh, complicated. But when you start having uh, you know all the different kinds of on, of object on the screen of different sizes and how they interact, how they overlap, it gets really messy. <laughs> and I wrote that code like uh, uh, six years ago, so I, I wasn't even uh, as good back then as I am now. So some of the code is still uh, kind of not optimal. So the bear paw has another question here I thought was fun. Uh, what was the funniest bug you squashed during testing? Uh, it's, uh, it's 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 hard to remember. I, I saw that question. I was trying to to remember some funny bugs. We definitely had funny bugs. What? Ah oh, no, no, that was test. That was test. We had a bug in testing. We have a testing area where we put stuff uh, we want to like uh, check check out in uh, for whatever reason. And uh, uh, generally, when we put something on that map, it uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't work like the usual map. You, you kill it and then it's gone. Instead, uh, it can respawn again and again. And uh, we, we managed to mess that uh, map so much that we had like a thousand dogs uh, spawned. Uh, you know, each one's standing in in the other one, so you can't see. But the map is was very slow. The combat was very slow uh, <laughs> and everything. But w one other bug comes to mind is uh, on one uh, early access update. We uh, something happened with the build process, and uh, you know those uh, switches in the first mission that you mm -hmm. have to activate. Sure. They were gone. They were gone, and for some reason we tested the first quest. I don't know why we did it, but good thing that we did it because it, there weren't any switches. You know, we broke the game at the start. Yeah, that <laughs> so would have been disastrous. That, that would be bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love those uh, rat hounds, by the way. I, you know, I always love the one of my favorite cr cr critters in any kind of RPG are the rats. You know, and it seems like it's kind of trendy nowadays not to have you fight. You know, they uh, always. You fight a dragon right off the bat instead of the rats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was really loved that know, opening I, yeah. graphic, and you even got the little rat hound right there in yeah, the yeah. title screen. Yeah. That was a well. Well, I'm a, I'm a traditionalist, you know, in everything, so I like to stick to the traditions. And uh, rats are like tradition for RPGs, so you have to have rats. You gotta have rats. I don't. Yeah. Know, I mean, it's, it's a simple concept. I don't know why people don't, <laughs> uh, can't grasp. The, but, the game is not going to be any better if you put like uh, frogs instead of rats. It's it serves the same purpose always you always like to say uh you know an rpg is going to be good if you fight the rats right at the beginning and it's actually fun to fight the rats because it's not mm. going to get any better after that you know if that part's boring <laughs> if they can't make it fun to kill some rats you know forget forget about it yeah. now so there's a question uh self it's a fanboy question quote unquote from rpg codex how did you go about designing the single most compelling turn-based RPG combat system? 
um, one step at a time. <laughs> it was an uh, iterative process, you know. It, it, the game is uh, now old, like uh, I think six years old. I don't remember exactly when I. St- I think it was uh, like uh, December two thousand and nine. I think is when the game I started programming the game. Before that, I was doing the engine. And like see, since uh, two thousand and ten. Uh, we iterated on the on the combat system and everything, and had uh, had the time to to polish it. And and, and I know that that that's. I think it's very important for uh, for uh, any game that focuses on like combat on uh, to have a, to have a long development time. I don't think there there's uh, any like modern game that has really good combat. And it was developed uh, like in in a year. I don't think that that that's possible because uh, unless you're like a genius of of design, which I don't think I am, you, you won't be able to get everything right in the first go. Uh, there's no way. I mean, if you look like a game, uh, look at the games uh, that rely uh, specifically on combat, like MOBA games or you know, uh, fighting games or that, that sort of st- stuff. They're, they're always, uh, uh, their concepts and their their uh, you know, mechanics were honed over years, you know. Even if it's not in the same game, they, they inherited something from the game before and they improved on that and, and that's how they came. No, no one s- sat down and wrote a perfect, you know, combat uh, right from the start. I can imagine the complexity. Of, you know, I just think about an RPG as all these moving parts. And you know, I think I read somewhere in one of your forums or blogs where you're talking about just you, you always want to add a little bit more to it. But every time you do, then it makes it exponentially more complex. I guess you have to go in and play it. <laughs> you know, I, how yeah. do you keep everything balanced and the, the well paced and the level progressions and so on? I mean, it must be extremely uh, complicated. Well, I, I don't. Uh, don't uh try specifically to balance stuff you know i do a bit uh, regarding the progression curve how quickly you level uh, especially with oddity system it's uh, much easier to to track uh, learning progression but uh, regarding the the balance you know I, I don't get down to to numbers specifically and that, that sort of stuff because i, do, I don't i don't uh, because it's not a pvp game i don't have to worry about one build being better than the other, I just have to worry about uh, old builds being fun and uh, being distinctive, you know, that sort of stuff, and uh, and, and that nothing is uh, too overpowered or too weak, or, or that sort of stuff. I don't, you know, balance one build against the other. The... Yeah, I saw one I was forum post. A guy was saying that the pistols were too weak or something like that. And... You know, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, it's a pistol. You know, it's going to be weaker, right, than a <laughs> a shotgun or a machine gun or something. Yeah, but then uh, then usually there comes a guy that shows like uh, 2,000 damage crit with pistols or something. You know, the pe- people find way, ways to make uh, uh, different builds uh, more powerful, and uh, usually the ways that I haven't thought of at all it just just so happens that uh, you can do some uh, optimizations there and uh, that, that's sort of fun I, I know i sometimes watch youtube videos of people with different builds and uh, and uh, and i'm amazed how i i didn't uh, uh, i didn't uh, think of that you know I, I made all the mechanics but the uh, the way the people combined it i it never occurred to me would it bother you if somebody found some super powerful you know, exploit uh, or something uh, along those lines, and uh, not really. Plowing I mean, through the if, 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 if codes and the like, is that? Yeah, if it's really, really powerful, then I usually nerf it when I <laughs> when I see it. So if you find some uh, powerful build and you want to keep it, you better keep quiet about it. You know. <laughs> Let's see. Also asked. Uh, some people dislike cooldown-based combat systems in general. Uh, what are the strengths of a cooldown system, in your view? Oh yeah, cool down. That, that that's another question for RPG Codex, right. probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, well there, there's nothing uh, specific f- uh, that cooldowns do well that other systems couldn't do. You know? The cooldowns are just uh, shortcut to a lot of things. You know, because if you if you think about it, 
uh, the way that you can balance uh, something that is uh, uh, that is uh, overpowered in the game is uh, by having some sort of resource that it manages. You know, maybe it's a time resource, maybe it's like materials or something. So, so say you have some powerful grenades you know, that you can, uh, if you don't have cooldowns, you could throw them every turn, like three times every turn. You know, so you have to find a way to to balance that. So you can do it in a lot of ways. The cooldowns are just one way to do it. And um, the interesting thing with the cooldowns is uh, that they are uh, abstract and can be applied to to a lot of things. You know. Just through one mechanic, you know. If you like, if you have like the thing with the grenades, you would have to make them. Uh, I don't know, uh, hard to prepare during combat. You know, you have to do something uh, to slow down the player so he can't throw three three grenades in one turn and all that stuff. And if you have some psi ability, you would have to have some some other way for preventing it. Preventing them to invoking the 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 most powerful psi ability all the time, you know. And when you have cooldowns, you can use it for all that stuff. So it's like a, like an abstract mechanism to to keep everything in check. You know, it's one way to do things. It's not it's not the best way or the worst way. Just just a way to. I understand that some people don't don't like them, but I I don't mind them. There must be some trade offs with you know balancing uh, the game play with uh, realism. I'm just thinking about the grenade example. You know, in real life, yeah, I mean, you're just chucking grenades. You could yeah, easily yeah. throw why three not? or four. Yeah. Why not? So I guess you have yeah. to come up with some some reason why you can't do that. Well, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to realism, uh, we try to uh, keep everything uh, uh, like uh, lore-wise and uh, like uh, uh, the basic... Uh, uh, physical reality, you know, consistent, so that there's, there's no wacky stuff and all that. Uh, but uh, when it comes to specific mechanics, we don't uh, don't follow like uh, super realism, where you, you say like I should be able to throw a crate of grenades, you know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I should no, no. Well, you can't because of gameplay reasons. You know. People have to understand it's a game, right? It's, it would be fun if you could do that. It may, maybe maybe a super realistic game would be fun. I'm not saying you know, but uh, if you have super realistic game, then you have to have like super realistic everything else. You know, the physics, the the AI, and everything that 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 would uh, be able to you know parry <laughs> your your super realism. So, like you have to make concessions you know, somewhere. That's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I should be back next week with a part three of this interview. And then uh, after that, I think I'll focus on doing some uh, retrospectives for a while. No, a lot of you guys have been asking for more of those, and I aim to please. So uh, please let me know what games you would like to see on the show. I'm pretty open-minded, but I tend to focus on RPGs and adventure games. So uh, let me know what you'd like to see, and I'll try my best to accommodate. As always, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your support of Matt Chat. Keep these episodes coming. Uh, all I ask, guys, is a buck a show, and you can sign up on the Patreon site in the show notes. Uh, and I want to welcome a couple of new people to the uh, Matt Rat ranks. Uh, we've got Vril, Gotrek, and looks like Clearance. <laughs> Maybe that's Clarence or something that I... I'm horribly uh, mispronouncing, but anyway, guys, uh, my intention is to thank you, so please forgive the mispronunciation, and uh, welcome to the Mat Rats. All right, let's see. What about the news from the Mat Cave? couple of interesting news items here. Uh, one was sent in by Stig Johansson. A Funcom is making a new Conan game. Now this apparently will not be another Age of Conan sort of MMO thing. He's thinking it's going to be a single player game. I guess it's kind of an open question at this point, but anyway, it really caught my attention. I love uh, Conan, especially the movies, and I love the books too. I'm reading uh, some by Robert Jordan right now. And uh, if you don't know Robert Jordan, he did the Wheel of Time saga, but he also wrote some Conan novels. I'm pretty sure that's how he got his start. Uh, so anyway, I'm really enjoying those, and uh, you know, I'd actually be, if you if you like Conan too, let me know what your favorite books are, because after this I'll be looking uh, for some new ones, and okay. And then let's see, Thomas wrote in about a, 
a platform RPG, uh, <laughs> platform RPG with procedural generation called Thy Sword. They got a really fun trailer up. Really uh, enjoyed this trailer. It looks like a really great game to a kind of an indie project there. So go check that out. And uh, I think that will do it for the news. So what about that ale of the week? Uh, well, this week I'm going to uh, a ginger beer. Uh, this is the Cock and Bull, uh, brewed by or bottled by the Spring Grove Soda Pop Company out of Spring Grove, Minnesota. So fairly local. Uh, I don't know how wide they distribute this. I see it all all over the place here in St. Cloud. So I wanted to give it a try. It's got a real ginger in it, uh, real sugar in it, citrus flavors, and the uh, rest of the ingredients are pretty common. Uh, anyway, I was uh, very intrigued by this. There's a lot of uh, companies around here doing microbrew uh, root beers and ginger beers in addition to the uh, regular beer. And I like them uh, almost as much as regular beer. It's kind of a nice, nice uh, change. Uh, so I thought I would try some of these over the next few episodes and uh, see what we can uh, find or uh, find available. If you have some uh, recommendations too, let me know and I'll see if I can find those. Anyway, let's get this uh, cock and bull open and see what it's all about. All right, so let's got some of this uh, cock and bull here in the rather excellent drinking horn. Ah, smells uh, smells really really nice. You definitely smell that ginger in there. Kind of a lemony, uh, lemon like lemon scent in there. Maybe some little lemon rind uh, type of aroma. This smells uh, absolutely wonderful. If you like a uh, ginger, that is. Uh, let's give it a try though. <clears throat> it's, it's very sweet. It tastes great. You, you get a bit of the heat. You know, some of these ginger beers is kind of almost hot uh, going down. This one's, uh, I would say, sort of middle. I've had a hotter ginger beers uh, than this one. This one's uh, just about right, in my opinion. I mean, you, you definitely know uh, it's got some ginger in there. Let me try it again. Yeah, it's, a, it's a really good balance of flavors. You get the sort of citrus, the sort of ginger. It's uh, maybe a little on the sweet side if you don't like real uh, sugary drinks. You know, I think they could have toned that down a little bit. I'll try it uh, one more time here. Uh, so yeah, it's very crisp, very refreshing. You definitely get a strong dose of the ginger flavor. Uh, the aftertaste is kind of a, kind of a spicy ginger uh, aftertaste on this, so I like that. A little on the sweet side for me. I think they, I like it a little bit less sweet than that, but otherwise, uh, very, very nice. I'm going to go a four out of five drinking horns on this. Uh, cock and bull ginger beer. Uh, really, really nice, but you know, hopefully I'll find a better one as I <laughs> pursue this a little ginger beer uh, fascination of mine. So uh, four out of five drinking horns on the cock and bull. All right, let's wrap this up with a uh, quotation. And I found a quotation here that I thought uh, went kind of well with the show, thinking about balance and combat mechanics and math. And it goes something like this. Do not worry about your difficulties in mathematics. I can assure you mine are still greater. A little quotation there from someone uh, math challenged. A little uh, physicist named Albert Einstein. See you guys next week. Before you do anything rash, like pressing another button, may I make an alternative suggestion?